Hey there, everybody. It's Bill McDonald, the reading and writing doctor. And today, I was, as I was thinking about my lesson that I wanted to do with my Crest teachers, I thought of a song that I got sung to a lot because my last name is McDonald. They either spent their time singing Old McDonald Had a Farm, E-I-E-I-O, or they would ask me if I had a Big Mac or if I, if I was related to Ronald McDonald. Well, you can't beat them, join them. I, when I was thinking about the different ways to process the strategies for a short answer response, I thought of that song, the E-I-E-I-O, and I was thinking, wow, the E of the E-I-O is for evidence. The I is whatever idea that you're going to share that responds to the topic or the answer to the question. And the O is how you decide to organize as long as you answer that question about the topic with the topic with your idea and with the E, the, the evidence. Now, I'm gonna get the song right out of the way because this lesson is for my Crest teachers. They're, they're in parts three, four, and five. Parts one and two were strictly on editing, and then revising, part one editing, part two revising. And we started off doing constructed responses by themselves, but then when I began to study more in depth about how the test is designed and how many of the constructed responses we're building a foundation for the short answer and how many of the short answer questions were doing the same, building a foundation for the extended essay, I decided to merge them. And so we're in the middle of parts three, four, and five. And what you're going to get to see tonight, uh, Crest teachers and Facebook friends and followers and those are my family that watch me is lesson 10 because we spent lesson nine looking at a passage, a paired passage. And the reasoning behind that was when I looked at the different sixth, seventh and eighth grade sample test questions, one of the sixth grade was based on a paired passage. So they give them a topic and then the topics I noticed for extended essay have usually been two part ideas, two part topics. So when your students respond to a topic that has two parts, they're going to have to make sure that their central idea, controlling idea, or thesis statement also has two parts. But here's the problem. If my idea is the red light, how am I going to know how to answer a question if all I read is the question, the red light. So I'm wearing a yellow shirt today on purpose because the yellow can represent all of the evidence, the entire selection. Your students could go highlighter crazy and highlight an entire passage, which is not going to help. So I went to Walmart and I found a couple of other yellow things. If you were to count evidence and do like a tally, they were selling these red 
yellow, green, and blue little castles in Walmart for 50 cents. So you could probably buy these in, in sets of four or five in at least red, yellow, and green, the colors of the traffic light that we're going to go over and be able to make tally marks about how many details or sentences that you want to use for it. the evidence so that you can say, okay, based on the evidence, which examples, one or two examples of the evidence could I use to come up with an idea based on the short answer question. So I'm going to sing you my song first, like I promised. It says on my Facebook post today, and I'll, I incl I'll include it in the email to all of you Crest teachers. Use the tune or melody from the song, Old MacDonald Had a Farm, to sing the steps below. I'm going to call it cheating if you read silently instead of singing the song out loud to yourself. So I'm curious how many of you actually took the time to sing the song. And there's not a lot of rhyming. There's some repetition. But the concept was the importance of the E, the I, and the O, the organization, the order of the idea and evidence not being relevant or important enough as long as the student does both parts. Uh, for example, these two uh, glasses, this pair of glasses, these two lenses have the same uh, power in terms of my ability to read things up close. So if I was to flip them this way, I can still see you as clearly. So if before this was the idea and that was the evidence, and I flipped it, well, then this is the idea over here, and the evidence is written first. So something else that I found that would be helpful is this little minion. And his body, as you know, is yellow like my shirt. The passage, the selection is yellow. He's got two feet. And we'll think of this as not a pair of shoes, but a paired passage where we think about questions about the first passage, then we think about questions about the second one, and then you tie the lace from this shoe, the inside lace, to the lace from the inside lace from that shoe, where they ask you questions because our second short answer question today is going to be how are certain people, places, things, ideas, or concepts in one passage, either similar, same, or different to the other one. Now, what I did to him, if you look a little closely, is I made red circles around the eyeballs of the minion, okay? It's on sale. Uh, well, they're not really on sale yet. They're at Walmart, and they sell these until after Halloween for about six, seven bucks. Uh, and so the reason that I made the red circles is because if I don't respond to the question with an idea, an answer, I'm going to get exactly what that circle looks like a zero okay but remember the idea i come up with has to relate to the question on short answer and the topic on extended essay okay and the only reason i'm going to be able to come up with a an answer to the question uh, central idea, controlling idea, or you see the little T in, in the middle, a thesis and transition, because as you transition from the question 
over to your idea. They have to relate to each other in some way based on the evidence that you use in your passage. Okay? So let me sing this song as promised so you can see one way out of dozens and perhaps hundreds that I'll be teaching you different ways to do editing, revising, constructed responses, short answer responses, extended essay responses, regular reading, multiple choice questions, which are still gonna be 75% of the test. Here's the song. Bill McDonald has a form for the short answer organization. Organization is the order, not formula, but the structure. Keep that in mind of how you respond to the question you or the topic. It's an E I here or an I E there. E I, that's evidence here. Idea there, i.e. Idea here, evidence there, either way we'll get a two. Structure is still there. So I'm saying that when I flip my glasses, as long as you have the evidence and the answer, you don't necessarily have to have them in a certain organizational structure they don't they didn't say the order they have to be mentioned in the rough draft rubrics it just says that we have to have those things okay bill mcdonald has a form e i i e o so you might be wondering what does the press training look like for those of you who have never watched it? Well, I'm not going to give you any of the questions that we went over, but I will tell you that the teachers who are looking at the paired passage and formative text for lesson nine on constructed questions. Question one was regular multiple choice. Question two that we'll go over tonight was a short answer. And as you see here, there's the red light. And a circle, an eyeball after the question, after the topic. What is the answer? Question. So I need my red light answer to respond to my red light question in short answer form. And then how to move it to a two, two possible ways is, two A is you could tell the reader where is the answer. And there's some examples of that down here, the line or lines, the scene or scenes, the stanza or stanzas the sentence or sentences in this first one, we're gonna go to certain sentences in a paragraph because that's what they asked us about. A section or sections, paragraph or paragraphs, evidence or evidence. Now I want you to notice that evidence is in regular words and it's in quotation marks. What I, as I look through all of the sample responses from third through 10th grade since TA is lagging on getting us the responses of what uh, scoring guide, the official scoring guides and rubrics look like. I basically have kind of gotten ahead of the game and tried to figure out what's gonna be the best, best way to not have us be wasting time. So question three was a text entry, a string of text, a number, a word, a phrase, a sentence, and I've noticed that sometimes it's two sentences. So one of my emails that I'm going to send the state is, hey, um, some of these text entry responses where it's 
sort of open-ended because the student has to write in the answer themselves. Uh, is it gonna, are they gonna always be worth one point or will they be worth two points? Are they gonna be graded by human, like the short answer and the extended essay? Or are they gonna be graded by a computer? So you'll see that one on numbers three and 11, the inline choice where they select from a drop down menu that was on the online practice test number four. I didn't have a matching table grid for this one. A hot text, you select from certain text and you can either uh, select an already highlighted text or if you don't have a program that does that, one simple way is to uh, go ahead and give your students five or six, three, four, five, six different sentences to select from. And then if there's one answer, then they pick, they copy and paste the one answer. Or if there's two hot texts, they can copy and paste both answers and place them into the box provided. Uh, that's one way to kind of get around uh, some of these fancy programs that they're coming up with. Number eight in the lesson nine is constructed multi-select where there's more than one correct answer to a question. It could be worth two points. It could be two correct answers or three correct answers for, but on these types, you're only gonna get two points. And so just so you know, for those of you who haven't seen the blueprints for third through eighth grade, you're only going to get two questions constructed or short answer that are going to be worth two points. So it'll either be one of these above the red line because above the red line is reading based. Two of these or one of these and one of these or possibly two of those. More than likely your students will get one short answer and then one of these to pick from, from the test. And you can see that on the blueprint. And it says that everybody's going to get one extended essay response where they go from a red light to like a one, yellow light to a two, a green light to a three. And then you can get the four or the five based on good editing and revising where you do it sort of like a shoe, pair of shoes, like a pair of passages where you tie everything together effectively. Uh, our next video for those of you who are in Crest will be lesson number 12. So what's a different way to look at it? Then look solely at number qu question number two and number 10 today. And so the red light is step one, W. What is the question? What's the subject? What's the focus? What's the topic about? You're going to look for words like what, if you watch me, me in the corner, who, when, where, why, which, and or how in the question to help you understand exactly what is being asked. And in short answer, so far, <coughs> the questions are all in the form of a question mark. The topics for extended essay have always been, have so far always been in form of a period, but we're only trying to get to two land. So once you understand the question and what is being asked, you should probably highlight those keywords, which we'll do, and then determine which of the W's uh, we need. And then we're going to say, uh, I can't do the first step. What is the answer? As you see here, the short answer, what is the answer? And there's several ways that you can answer a question. For those of you who have kids who struggle, they can restate or repeat. What original words, wow, W-O-W, -W, from the question can I use to help me respond to it? 
in a simple way. That would be restating and repeating. And it's okay to do that as long as you're actually answering the question, not just repeating the words from it. Rephrasing is what other words can I use? Synonyms, wow words, higher vocabulary. Reflecting, higher level thinking. What other ways can I start my sentence? In other words, using different parts of speech. Or if you feel like everybody's going to give the evidence first, then you give the answer first. If everybody's going to give the answer first, then you give the evidence first. Uh, that would be the reflecting what original way. In other words, if you feel like there's a certain one text that everyone's going to use to respond, sometimes if you can think critically and outside the box, as long as you can justify your answer with that evidence, you want to think, okay, these words in alphabetical order, evidence, example, explain, explode. If I'm only trying to get a two, I've got to decide from all the evidence that's there, my whole shirt, my whole yellow little castle, my whole minion, which evidence should I highlight that's specifically related to and relevant to the question that's being asked? And that's where that yellow part comes in. You can either say um, WWE for expository because even in a short answer, you're going to be at saying what the answer is. You might tell the reader where, as in the location, like we mentioned on the folder, and then you'll give your evidence either with or without quotation marks. So the idea is to say, okay, I can't go straight from a one step one, the question to go to step one and come up with the answer. I've got to go as in green and say, I'm going to keep going and I'm not going to slow down yellow light, yellow highlighter until I find some evidence in certain places that will be related to and relevant to whatever the question was asking about. And the reason I circled these words in my one, two, three with WWE, one and two points for mul multiple choice and constructed, two points for the short answer, three points for the extended essays, and get a five when conventions thrive. That's that blue part in the bottom, things that you should do. And um, you did see that my little friend has a blue part in the bottom, uh, sort of like when you water the grass with blue water, it's going to make the grass turn greener. And so basically, if you spend some time doing the editing and revising, it's going to make your evidence, your idea, and your example all tie together and be more effective. So that's basically what I'm going to use as a guide. So let me take you to the online test so that we can actually put that into practice. Okay. This is question 12, the one that would be part of my next video. And that's what those ex extended essays look like. They're pretty elaborate. And you see that there's five bullets, one, two, three, four, five. Your students could um, follow those as a guide to get a five from two different readers. And because it was a paired passage, um, because the online test has a horizontal layout where the, the passages are to the left and the questions and answers are to the right. I still have them in the same place, but I, I included the passages or the paragraphs that are being asked about uh, on the top or the bottom. And then the question is about is 
just above it. So I've done that. So what we'll do is I'm going to go backwards and let you kind of see. I'll be, that was the last question. I'm going to go all the way back. So there was, that's the short answer that we'll go to. Second, number nine, you can see what I did was I, I based them. I used six, seventh and eighth grade questions from the 2021 tests. I want you to notice that, that um, very important that you see that, that I, I, I wanted to ask questions based on skills that your students struggle with. So that one came from a sixth grade test. And so we keep going back. Number eight was from, um, uh, there's two answers to the question. Uh, we've got to pick two of those to get it correct. Number seven was a regular multiple choice. I just felt like even though we're working on you know, Crest was about editing, revising, constructive responses, short answer, and extended. I felt like I needed to practice enough regular reading with regular multiple choice that your kids didn't get out of it. And so uh, for those of you who are Crest training teachers, you're going to be receiving some of these online passages every month, and they will look like the regular test where you'll see up to 75% in multiple choice. And uh, about 25% will be the constructed short answer and an extended essay question. So this was that two-part question where it says clearly part B. And in order to get credit for this one, you have to get part A correct. And so that, this was one of the first reasons I was realizing that I needed to connect the part five to part four and part three, because most of these part A and B questions were based on uh, the first part, part A was based on an answer to a question and part B, if it, even though it was constructed was, okay, now just give me evidence, just one piece of evidence that supports what you chose for your answer. And you only get part B points if part A, this part right here is correct. So going back and thanks for your patience. I just felt like I wanted to show you uh, the drop down menu. Uh, question number four, you may be asking, you can message me. I have a link where some of you maybe don't want to purchase the Crest online trainings, uh, but you can buy the individual online practice tests and they'll be named and they'll, they'll kind of have a brief explanation of each test. So, um, on the drop down, there's typically four answers to pick from, and it looks like the online test that your kids are going to take as much as possible. I tried to make it match text entry. Uh, in this case, all they had to was pick a word, but they, because um, this was a paired passage, um, I chose a sentence from one of the passages and compare it to a sentence from the other one and they had to figure out a certain detail oh no i think this was just on one one um, one one question but it was two different details about an event that took place with uh, a board game and the kids had to figure out based on the two sentences what a certain uh, which word kind of helped the reader understand the author's opinion of whoever he was talking about this Daro guy that you see there in the question, right? So we're finally getting back almost to the beginning. This is what we're gonna work on right now. Uh, short answer, kind of following the guides. Uh, typically all the short answers are gonna be uh, 475 character response. So if you use mine, then you'll just have to do subtraction and uh, tell your students that when you get to 2,000 characters remaining that you've already gone past. And so your short answer has to have uh, 2,225 uh, characters remaining or more 
if you're gonna, I'm sorry, 2025, yeah, 2025 uh, would be the magic number where they had to stay under. But because short answer is just that, a short answer, I noticed that most of the answers only needed, you know, two sentences or three sentences at the most. So before we get into that one, I, just, I figured I might as well show you all of them. Uh, this will get number one, started off uh, with a regular multiple choice, but as you can see on the results, based on the grade level, you know, what I did for you, I showed the year, all 2021, either sixth, seventh or eighth grade, the average date percent correct, meaning everybody struggled with it. Uh, the question number that it was based on, but using my own passage, what category it came from, and if it was readiness or supporting. Now, if you didn't see the video or the post about it, I noticed that in the, the small print underneath your blueprint for third through 10th grade, it says anywhere from 25 to 45% of the points that your students can earn on a particular reading test are going to be based solely on supporting standards. So 45 basically is almost half the test. So I'm hoping that they lean more towards uh, 25. What they typically did most years, it was usually about 33. In other words, two thirds of the test was readiness each year and one third of the test was supporting things that they should have learned in previous years. And so that's why there has to be an interdependence between the sixth grade teacher and whoever the fifth grade teacher. So they, 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 they stress a lot about vertical alignment. So let's go ahead and we'll just focus on the two questions, you know, and just in like in the star, you can kind of skip around and answer questions that you feel are easier. Um, because they're only asking about one paragraph, I didn't need to put the entire passage inside here. Okay, so we said, step one, let's read the question. And so what we'll do since the question is the red light, even though your kids might not be able to highlight in red on the real test, the more they can get used to that concept um, as the red light and its answer, you know, being one in unison, like my little friend, the minion. Okay. So use when you're bored, invent a board game to answer the question. So you got to make sure that you are looking at the right passage and it, for the kid benefit, it'll be right there beside them. Read each question carefully, then answer the and then enter your answer in the box provided. Uh, for those that are not familiar, I went ahead and labeled what kind of question each one is. So here's where we get to the nitty gritty. What is the most likely reason? So which W was being asked? A Y question. Why did the author include information? So now you can see it's an informative about uh, an in in event or some events that took place in the past. The amount of time, that's a when, that Alfred Butts, that's a who, spent creating the game. That's what he did. And again, in paragraph two, so you just focus on paragraph two. And so before I can start reading, I have to decide, okay, what do I need to look for? Anything that has to do with Alfred Butts taking time and making his game. So if you are going to be telling the reader where, then you might want to count the sentences as you go. And so every sentence is like a street that you pave with a subject and a predicate. So what you can do is you can count just either in your head or 
you can kind of keep track with some highlighting. Two of the most popular board games in the 1900s were Monopoly and Scrabble, period. So there's one sentence. Since that wasn't about the amount of time or that Alfred Butts, the creator, spent on his game, I'm not going to highlight anything there. Both were created in the early 1930s. Didn't say how long it took to make them. During a time in America called the, 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 the Great Depression. Now, even though I only had two periods, there were two main ideas there. So you're only going to count sentences. Uh, you have to be careful on that. So you just count the complete thought. So I'll get out my eraser and I'll erase this one. You can say, oh, so far, that that's the second sentence. During that time, during that time period, times were really discouraging because a lot of people lost their jobs and many businesses went bankrupt. Since that's still not about Albert Butts taking a long time, it wouldn't be sentence three. Here's sentence four. Alfred Butts was one of those people who struggled to find work and was trying hard to make money. Okay. All right. So all we know then is for some reason he was out of work and he needed some money. How are you going to make some money? Let's check sentence five. He thoroughly enjoyed doing crossword puzzles. his passion, his personality. So one day he began putting the ideas together for a make-it-yourself crossword puzzle game. So that would be sentence you know, what we have so far. One, two, three, four, five. For the next few years, he experimented. Sentence six, okay? So I'm already seeing something that talks about how long he took. And so anything that has to do with him taking time to make a game, I've got to figure out what's, what's it there for. So I've got to this decide or I've got to determine it's better yellow. I think. There we go. So, sentence six, experimenting for about two years. Well, I don't really know why he's including this. Let's find out a little bit more either about the game, the amount of time, or Alfred Butts, so that we can kind of merge those ideas together. Every day without fail, he read the front page of the New York Times. Every day without fail. Okay. So basically, when they said he spent two years, uh, every, he read the front page of the New York Times. Okay. What's the big deal there? Well, it was a very word packed newspaper with a lot of teeny tiny print. So since the page has so many words and he did this every day for apparently two years, it says a little bit about him, his character, his personality, his determination what kind of person he was once he decides to do something he was committed because it did say every day without fail that was it that would be an important thing if you're going to talk about uh, maybe why the author included how long it it took well one of the reasons could be it showed a little bit about the kind of determined person he was to do something or 
if we talked about the game itself, the amount of effort that goes into a game, especially if, like, I don't see anybody helping him here if no one's going to help you. So let's see if there's anything more that we can add to this. He counted every single letter. Okay, that's part of the process. So we're going to add that in there. It's changing to that other yellow that I don't like. He counted every single letter and kept a detailed chart of how each letter was formed. So we have one, two, three. That way he could figure out how each, how many letter tiles his game would need. It would be like trying to make a chart of how many times each letter in the alphabet appears just on this page alone. So what they were trying to do there was, let me just explain to you just how difficult of a task that he's taking on and why it's taking him uh, so long. So we have about five sentences of evidence. I have five fingers in my hand. What you've got to decide then, based on all of this, what would be a reasonable response? Why? Would the author include it? So, look at all that. And all the scrolling back and forth. Sometimes it's worth writing down some key words. So, what I did so that I wouldn't forget what they were, I kind of jotted down like the sentence numbers onto my reading graphic organizer. So let me show you that using my document camera. And I think I'll just focus on this question for today, uh, just so we don't get overwhelmed. Um, just want to give you a reasonable amount of things to think about. So I'm going to show you the document camera. And so what I did was I kind of broke down the sentences, the five or six sentences, he experimented over years that every day without fail, he read the, the, the front page, the times. He counted every letter and charted how each one was used. Uh, that was a cause and effect relationship. So there was a transition to an effect. Uh, he was that because he did that, because, because he was able to figure out how many letter tiles his game would need and so this is a combination of his hard work ethic and how hard it is to make a game that um, is based on vocabulary and words and even letters how many times each letter appeared on one page alone so if you know the game scrabble based on the more a letter is used, the less the point value that letter had on the tile. The less times, and he, again, he didn't do this for two days, two hours, two months. He did this an analysis for two years so that over such a long period of time, he would have an accurate game based on how often, on the average, did each letter come out. And so I'm going to have to decide of all these examples of evidence, which one can I use so that I could figure out what I would want to say, okay? So there's kind of like two responses that I would look at and 
if we're going to focus that the author was focusing on on him and his character you know he was um an out of work guy but instead of wasting time he did a very detailed assignment uh, so that his game would come out great and so as i come back to the test I'll, I'll have this on my paper because one of the things that I did for you uh, in the training yesterday was I said I needed a new set of rules so that when we begin to look at the questions, we label by highlighting the questions and the topics, and we also label only the related relevant details of the evidence that will support that question or the topic. And that will get me that two response that we're trying to. And notice that I read either softly or loudly because silence is deadly in the classroom of auditory learners. So if I, if I have that as a guide, and even though we can't underline, like in the old days, we still have to understand exactly, I have to give you an answer that has something to do with the, the man. Let's see. Uh, didn't name his name here, but it's in the question, so I'll look at that again. Or the amount of you know the, the the amount of time is the important thing. Uh, so the amount of time, what does the amount of time show about him, or what does the amount of time show about the game, or possibly what does the amount of time show about both of them? And the question was only asking about paragraph two. This is my palm and so you see two rows of p's there so i could answer any reading question based on any of those p's and then because every passage ties together depending on the type of question we would circle a different one uh, for each part of the reading test and so this glorified graphic organizer called the hand helps me understand uh, comprehend the content so we'll just and i kind of cheated a little bit uh, i gave all of my teachers in the crest online training a pdf of the entire test so that they could see the passages, the questions, and that's that's what I have right here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take you to the test again, the portion of the screen, so that you can see just a couple of examples, like um, something that I came up with. So, all right. So here is one example based on the evidence, okay? And um, this time I'm going to put the idea first, the answer, okay? Um, and you wouldn't write this part, but just so you can know, this is the answer, what we're gonna call the red light. The length of time that Alfred but that was his name, spent creating the game highlights. Okay. And so I've got to decide now, do I want to focus on him or the game? Because those keywords in there talk about both. 
So here's what I wrote as my example. The efforts and energy and energy it takes to create a board game. Now, because in this paragraph, at least, he didn't have any help, I might add that detail, especially on your own. So if that's my answer, then I've got to say, okay, well, what's my evidence? Okay. Something that talks about effort and energy. That's all they need to look for, which would take a lot of effort and energy. So as I count the sentences down, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to use sentence six and sentence seven. And because my WWE said, once you tell me what your answer is to the question, do you want to let me know where you're getting it from? We can do that. So I'll do that for you. In, in their uh, sentence six and seven, comma, it states that he worked on the game for about two years. Now, I want to add a little bit more. You can, but remember that it, for each evidence that you add has to be an example that helps tie together, okay? Because working on the game is not the effort, but what I need, I need the effort. So uh, it took him two years, and what would be the best effort would be probably that he did this every day without fail. That takes a lot of energy. Every day without fail, he read the first page of the, of the, the, York, York Times which had very tiny print. Okay. So that's just an example and so the reader is going to have to decide is there enough there that would be support it's time you put another space between your periods so that they're not so close, the sentences are not so close together. Okay. So if the answer is the red light, then the evidence, if I can find my mouse again, get back to the evidence. All right, just so you can see. And again, you wouldn't have your kids do this. Yellow is the uh, sorry, same structure. The evidence check this would be in yellow. So when you use my test, you can print the student's response, and then uh, you can use color coding to say, okay, if I can find the answer, I will underline it in red. And then I've got to check and see, does that answer tie into the topic? And does it also uh, use the evidence that supports it? 
So since the main thing was the energy and the effort, which would the reader feel like doing something every day for two whole years, uh, it's a lot of effort. Yes, so I feel like that would be enough to get the two points. Now, a couple of uh, one point responses. If you only answer the question or give evidence of the two year process, that would be a one because both the answer and the evidence need to be written to qualify for a two. And this is written very clearly for the uh, rest teachers in their PDF attachment. Another one point response. An answer similar to the one above is written by the student, but the text used is from another, another paragraph besides paragraph two, or there's only text about monopoly, the great present depression or business is going into debt. In other words, nothing that was being asked about. Because remember we said, we need to only highlight the relevant related text to the question. None of those ideas would support the idea about the amount of time that Alfred ben Butts spent doing his game. And uh, this is important and I'll kind of let you see this. Uh, Stop sharing in the chest and share. It's important that you do know that lots of kids are going to get zeros and a lot of them will be for the same reasons they got zeros on regular expository. So another zero could be the response is indecipherable. What in the world are you writing? Illegible, I can't read it or incoherent. It does not make any sense whatsoever. The response does not answer the question being asked or provide the text evidence that supports the idea. So remember that if you do one or the other, you do get a one. So um, here's uh, what I wrote on in the red and the yellow for the teachers as a guide, as a possible scoring guide for them. Uh, you could also say the opposite, like I said, uh, in sentences six through 10, it spoke about his work ethic and his attention to detail, period. Because of that, it shows that the, the author was trying to show that Alfred Butts was the kind of person that was willing to take whatever time it took to produce a game that was effective, that was uh, meaningful. And as you'll read later on that it became popular. So you could switch the order. Like I said, EI, I-E-O, the idea can be first and then the evidence, or the evidence can be first and then the idea as long as you have both. And so basically there's the question, and I kind of did that for all of the questions that were short answer or extended. I gave my little one example of a two. And so you could pick anything. You could do a character analysis for the teachers who are in the crest training, one of the, the reading posters I gave them uh, basically was uh, specifically about characters and what makes them tick and what ticks them off. What are their facial expressions? What are their hand gestures? Since actions speak louder than words, what are some things that are doing that they're doing that show their character and their integrity or their lack thereof. And, you know, basically it's kind of a character analysis. So since most of the questions that were extended essay responses were based on characters, I had to make that poster so that your students would have an easy time doing that when it time came time to analyze. And so if you are a teacher who is not part of Crest Training, but you're listening to this video and you're still listening, 
uh, like several of you did the last ones that were long, uh, you can tell me that uh, I would like the poster on analyzing and understanding the characters. Because whether you're doing a genre called a play about a character or characters, a poem about a character or characters, a fictional story, or a literary nonfiction, or in this case, an informative passage also talked about the character and the personality of the creator of the game. Uh, Scrabble and uh, Hopefully this helped you. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. If you would like to become part of the Crest Online training, just message me or email me and I'll send you the link so that you can join. Uh, we're almost done. Um, we're going to do, I'm gonna have to make sure that lesson uh, 11 now will be the second short answer because I'm, trying to keep the time limited somewhat, uh, but I do want to be as detailed as possible. I want to give you as much quality in the quantity of time that we have together. So good evening or good morning or good afternoon, whatever time of day it is for you when you're watching this. Have a blessed evening. Uh, tune in next time, Crest Teachers, when you see Question number 10, which will be a short answer about two different passages. And I felt like it was important to have one of those in case your kids got one so that they knew that, okay, I've got to answer a question about how the two passages were similar. And that will be in our next video. And it will be smaller because uh, it'll just be you guys and myself not anybody else and we've come so far and learned so many things that I'll be able to zoom in and kind of get right to the nitty-gritty and show you some possible answers on a two or a paired passage short answer response that requires an idea for both passages the evidence for both passages and that they relate to the topic t-i-e the topic the idea for both passages and the evidence the yellow shirt that i'm talking about or the yellow minion or the yellow castle or yellow box you've seen lots of yellow the yellow stick man on the boulders take care and god bless you guys